What's up guys and welcome to another top 10 video from me, Scarander. And um, yeah, what to start off with here? I really just want to do a top 5 at the get-go, but we are just have too many good Mega Evolutions now since the Mega Ruby and Alpha Sephiroth came out, and I really couldn't narrow it down to 5, and all of these 10 are to be considered, you know, the best of the best, and uh, they're here for a reason, and that is that they actually brought a lot of good things to the table, and uh, I'm gonna do my own twist on this, and actually not include um, the Pokemon that have been banned by Smogons, because their supremacy and strength has all already been defined by Smogon alone, so I just want to do my own twist, and uh, choose the Pokemon I see changed up enough to actually become a lot stronger than it were before, so... Um, if the Pokemon were strong before, but got stronger, it's not going to be included on this list. But if the Pokemon has been weak before and actually stepped up its game, then yes, it's going to be on this list. So, with all this in mind, guys, let's go. Number 10, Mega Ampharos. So this Pokemon barely made a cut, but it is just as strong as the other ones on this list. Mega Ampharos brought actually a new thing to the table. It got a lot more chunkier, a bit slower, and got a vastly higher special attack, and got a new typing with Dragon, which meant that yes, now have three more weaknesses, but hell, it can tank those weaknesses and retaliate with a KO, and in conjunction with learning agility and stuff like that, while it's slower, it is still in conjunction where agility can actually help out enough to actually retaliate back on, and Mega Ampharos just overall became a threat, and just entered OU from day one, He's now in UU, but hell, this thing packed a lot of punches, and it works well in Trick Room, and it works well as a wall to just retaliate back on. It is, like I said, chunky enough to actually stay around for the longest of time, and Mega Ampharos just overall became a very great threat very early on in the metagame, and he's still around for that very, very reason. I myself like Ampharos a lot, and seeing this thing get a Mega Evolution and got the Luscious hair, really really just brought this thing just way out of proportion and made it a lot stronger than it needed to and i love it because of that a little sad though that it didn't learn tail low or anything like this this generation we can only hope we can only hope but it definitely is a comfortable number 10 spot it is definitely one of the best mega evolution introduced in this generation number nine mega pincer so yeah, this thing made the same kind of leap as Mega Ampharos went from NU to a rather insignificant bug to actually be the go-to bug because of Mega Heracross, of course, getting the boots and being a bit slower, which means that the regular evolution was slightly better. Mega Pinsir got the flying typing, which basically meant that, oh no, Stealth Frogs is real, but a lot of people are using Mega Pinsir as a last resort, which means they're not supposed to switch it out and conjunct with Moxie, get a boost, Mega Evolve, then get the speed boost, then attack boost, which Mega Pinsir just have a lot of, and just Thrash Pokemon, because Thrash with Aerial 8 made this Pokemon, you know, not only like sincerely broken, but really just brought a real end game to every battle. Mega Pinsir is vastly, vastly superior to a lot of Pokes in this list, but it's just not that versatile when it comes to the defensive department, and people are like in higher tiers to switch out, and Mega Pinsir doesn't really fit that. But as a standalone poke, and as I said, as a last resort Pokemon, Mega Pinsir just brings a lot of threat to the table and is a great Pokemon to utilize in the endgame. And yeah, it's just that good. It really is. A lot of Pokemon, you know, was hating on it at the beginning because of its typing, but as the time went on, Mega Pinsir will just come more and more menacing. And that is why it is in the number 9 spot. Number 8. Mega Pidgeot! So yeah, this is actually one of those Pokemon that made the biggest leap this time, because Mega Pidgeot is just... I don't know how to put it, it just became too strong really, it just got a main focus on special attack, and it can utilize itself really really well, it lack in a greater move pool in special attack, yes, but the two stabs it has is just about enough to cope with a lot of things, and getting Heat Wave takes rid of the steel weakness, which means that only rocks really are able to fend it off, and there are ways to solve that with hidden power and whatnot if that's really necessary. But Mega Pidgeot, like I said, made a great leap because of the original form, Pidgeot, 
is actually probably one of the worst Pokemon still around because it was really not meant for future meta game. was just a go-to Pokemon to have the first catch. But Mega Pidgeot brought the new things to the table. It got, like I said, vastly stronger. And with no guard, there is no reason to worry about Hurricane. There is reason to worry about Stone Edges. But there's where it all ends. Mega Pidgeot is just that good. And it is extremely versatile. And with its speed, it's able to outspeed a lot of things. And just basically, it has no fear. Once it has Mega Evolved, there is no real thing really stopping it before it actually gets to hit first. And when it hits first, it goes for a kill. It is just that simple. And that is why this Pokemon is on the number 8 spot. Number 7. Mega Blastoise. This guy made quite the transformation in Generation 6 now, didn't it? If people remember correctly here from Generation 5 and backward, people talk about Blastoise being one of the offensive spinners, one of the good Pokemon to really keep around. It was still a resonating UU, but it was basically a tank, a spinner, you know, brutalized a lot of poke by tanking it out with toxic and whatnot. That is barely mentioned anymore because this thing just got a way better move pool. When I say way better, I mean way better. It's got access to Aura Sphere, Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, and now with Mega Launcher introduced this generation, Mega Blasters just, just went out of proportion when it comes to this move pool. It went from a tank to a sweeper tank. And yeah, I can't really stress enough, this transformation made Blastoise just a powerhouse of a Pokemon. It has the versatility to deal with a lot of threats this time around, and being that it is a bit chunky means that you don't gonna take it down the first hit, so you can't really hit it unless you wanna go down after the hit and trying to wheel it down. Mega Blastoise just, way, just went very, very well out of the way to become from a tank to actually become a very versatile sweeper. And it is here to stay. It is definitely one of the biggest changes to a move pool ever introduced in a generation so far. And that is why Mega Blastoise is the number 7 spot. Number 6 Mega Beedrill. So, yeah, this Pokemon is probably the biggest leap when it comes to strategies and whatnot when it comes to Pokemon. Usual, Beedrill is one of those Pokemon that people are watching, you know, giving a bad eye to and just throw away. But the Mega Form kind of changed things up. And when I say kind of, I mean really, really changed things up. Mega Beedrill with adaptability just became a powerhouse of a Pokemon. It's a glass cannon like a Lucario. But I don't know if this thing is, might be even better because it got a good chunk of speed to be able to outspeed almost anything in its tier. And conjunction with the power of 145 base attack, this thing is killing Pokemon. There is no going around it. Sure, it is brittle. I mean, you can pretty much take it out with a war gun. You know, it it is that brittle, and I will not. I don't want to see this thing in real life because I wonder if even the sun will take it out. But as a standalone Pokemon, you know, after got a Mega Evolution done, this thing becomes a genuine threat. Like can't really be coped with because you need to outspeed it to take it out or it has to be the last poke and has no way of escaping the hit because U-turn or Exissa is more than enough to take on a lot of things and in conjunction with having knockoff, drill run, you can actually cope with the opponents that are able to take it out. It just has that much, more, much power in its versatility and its core then it's not really easy to take out and it's extremely versatile when it comes to attacking and taking out folks. It is basically that it is a hidden runner or a pure sweeper. It has no way of setting up without besides Fell Stinger, but I'm not entirely sure it really needs to set up because it just goes for a kill, like I said. And uh, sadly you have to wield protect on this thing to actually mega evolve because it is brittle as F. But once that's done, there is nothing to stop it, and that is why it is in the number six spot. Number 5. Mega Minetric. This Pokemon just might be the very definition of more power is just about enough. And um, it really is what it is here. Mega Minetric did really the, the, didn't get the change people was looking for. It was actually quite a quite simple Mega Evolution, but what it got was that it got faster and stronger than both Jolteon and Raikou. 
and as a result of that become the main electric Pokemon with you know the usual sets of being fast, Volt Switch, having hidden power eyes and just could brutalize Pokemon but being just nifty and do ship damage, Mega Manetric just might be right now that go-to Pokemon when it comes to this kind of strategy. Mega Manetric are extremely versatile, it is fairly strong and it is fairly fast and it basically like I said just doing chip damage and he just might be the visual representation of that kind of Pokemon right now. All electric Pokemon with the high speed and high special attack function the same way but this Pokemon does it best right now and it moved way above its tier. It went from an actually rather low NU tier to actually go right off the OU and have stayed there since because it just did that much different. 50 base more in speed and 40 more base and special attack was more than enough to actually brutalize a lot of opponents and um, basically people were bashing on this Pokemon because it was too, still too brittle and the change was, wasn't big enough. The change just was big enough. It was big enough to put down Jolteon from an UU to RU and it was big enough to put Raikou from an OU to an UU because he just was no match for this Pokemon anymore. And that is why Mega Manetric is on the number 5 spot. Number 4 Mega Charizard Y and X. So, yeah, when Stealthor was introduced in Generation 5, people stopped using Charizard because it was not longer the go to Pokemon when it comes to special attacking fire, because the flying type pretty much brittled it down, much like Moltres. But then came the Mega Evolution, and it got extremely strong and got brought to boost its high special attack and stab moves, and there we go. Mega Charizard Y might just be the Pokemon to go to when it comes to this. It actually went from a change where people just designed their team around this Pokemon. They had spinners, they have defoggers. Charizard Y was their main sweeper, and there was no going to deny, to deny that changes. And even so, if people didn't have a spinner or anything like that, they still made sure that this thing that we did came in, it came in for a kill, because that was what Charizard Y does and X. Charizard X got the tough claw, which makes it extremely, extremely versatile. If Charizard Y might just be the better synergy Pokemon of the two. Charizard Y, definitely the sweeper based. Charizard Y, definitely more team based and can actually pack quite a punch with his high special attack. And just overall, Charizard Y just went and stepped up to the game way more than Mega Blastoise could do when it comes to his Kanto Cousins. And it just blew out of proportion and it's still resonant in OU because it just brings a lot to the table and can actually boost his teammates so much so that it can deal with a lot of things. And with Sun Support, it is not that brittle to the water types move, which means that this Pokemon is going to stay and going to take out whatever is necessary, plus Sun helped it out with the Solar Beam, which made this Pokemon even more threatening, and that is why this Pokemon is on the number 4 spot. Number 3, Mega Lupani! So this Pokemon made quite the leap too in its tier, didn't it? It went from actually quite the low PU to the mighty UU right now, and it's probably gonna stay there with its new type in fighting and with a new attack move high jump kick and the new ability is crafty. This thing just might only use its stab move to hit whatever it means. It can hit anything with its two stab moves crafty because it can't miss Ghost this time around. Which means that Mega Lupani just went from kind of a supporter Pokemon to the purest of sweepers. It got a high attack and high speed to deal with a lot of things and it kept its great defenses, which means that it's not really that easy to take out. You can actually take a Bandit Braver from a Talonflame and Retaliate with just about enough power to take it out. And in conjunction with that, this thing has Cosmic Power and can learn Brain Punch, which means that it can actually get quite chunky and actually retaliate with that, and that is just terrifying to know. Mega Lupani might not be the most advanced Pokemon introduced, but it made a lot of changes to it to actually be able to deal with a lot of threats. So Mega Lupani definitely stepped up its game, and it is extremely <laughs> dangerous in its tier, and um, yeah, it's just a tough Pokemon overall because it is chunky to take up damage, which is something a sweeper is 
extremely dangerous to have. That is an ability that not a lot of sweepers can have, and that makes it a huge threat in its tier, and that is why it is on the number 3 spot. Number 2, Mega Venusaur. Do any of you guys remember what the Venusaur was before Generation 6? Because I don't. I checked it out. It is a lead seed supporter Pokemon then. Things change. Quite drastically. This Pokemon just went through one of the biggest changes of any Pokemon when it comes to Mega Evolutions. This Pokemon went from being quite brittle to probably the chunkiest thing around. With thick fat ability, this thing just stepped up his game. It takes fire damage now. It takes ice damage now. Quite good actually. It got a good chunk of defenses and it got a higher special attack. Sure, it's not fast, but hell, if you are chunky then you don't really care for that now, do you? Mega Venusaur just stepped up his game enough to actually reside in OU and there is where it will stay. Mega Venusaur just went to be one of the biggest threats in that tier and for the very right reasons. This thing are just a beast. I can't really stress that enough. Um, let's just face it, once Fairy got introduced, you know, to take down what we knew as the previous generation was the main threat, Dragons, this thing came in and actually took care of those fairies. And it got enough strength to be able to cope with those Pokemon without even needing to care. Grass, poison, might just be the best typing to be able to cope with any fairy Pokemon whatsoever. It can take out the fighting moves, it can take out fairy moves. It don't care too much for any damage besides flying and psychic, which are quite easy to anticipate. This Pokemon just went out of the way to become the main threat of this generation. But it is one more that is a bit stronger, but that is why at least the Mega Venusaur is on the number 2 spot. Number 1! Mega Altaria! Oh. Oh. Oh, this Pokemon. This Pokemon just... Wow. This is how it creates a defining Pokemon for a generation. Mega Altaria went for a significant change of being a copy-paste flying dragon, much like Dragonite. You know, not really working, it was more chunky, it had access to Roost, yes, but it, it has a decent chunk which made it. It definitely couldn't pack a punch. To Mega Vault, and from fighting fire with fire as dragons does, this thing just went all out of the way and grabbed a scoop of the water and just put down the fire with its fair type and now being immune to what was the right call for any Dragon Pokemon. They went from dragons that actually you know, stand against one another, you know, overpowering each other, to just don't care. Mega Altaria just went out of the way. It got one of the most balanced stats ever. And in conjunction with this, it can be whatever you want it to be. With Pixelate, it gets normal typing, now becoming fairy moves. And with the fairy dragon typing, it can actually brutalize a lot of things. And it's chunky enough to take a lot of damage. There's access to Roost and access to Dragon Dance. And the most common sets are Return, Earthquake, Roost, Cutting Guard. But Hyper Voice works extremely well in this Pokemon too. They got a good accessibility of moves like Flamethrower, Ice Beam, it can do a lot of mean things. And in conjunction with that, Mega Altaria just stepped up the game and is definitely the biggest and most brutalizing mean Pokemon that has been introduced this generation. And it just defined a tier because of that. It went from a nifty, nifty PU to an OU and it will stay there for the very right reason. You just can't take this thing down. It is just that strong. And that is why he is my number one. So yeah, we've become a rather lengthy video, wasn't it? I I'm really sorry about that. It is tough to make a top 10 and, you know, trying to narrate every Pokemon to at least two minute introduction. May these Mega Pokemons are, every one of them are good Pokemons and I love them for that. And I can't really stress enough, these Pokemons are actually just great definement of what a Mega Evolution should be all about. And I really believe all these Pokemon, like I said, are worthy of the number one spot, to be honest. But definitely Mega Altaria and Mega Venusaur are probably one of the biggest threats still for me. And um, I love seeing them. And I, love, I hate being, of course, losing to them. But I love losing to them for the right reasons. If you have a different opinion, make sure to write that down below. Because I read those comments and I care for them a lot. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video, and if you do, make sure to leave a like, of course. And remember, the sky is the limits of a good guys, and take care, alright? Bye.